pocket against the first place team in 1-2A, that being Unicoi County, or if you prefer, Big 7 Conference and the Three Rivers Conference. I'm just having a mental block on what the conference, I knew the Unicoi County because I can do their games and all this. Yesterday we uh, called an 11-4 victory for Unicoi County against Mountain Heritage of North Carolina. They're out of Burnsville, North Carolina. And so Unicoi County, which has struggled a bit on the diamond look, Raymond Avilia, who normally plays shortstop, the Cougars from Burnsville, North Carolina, and they'll go to try to even their record up on Saturday when they travel to Rogersville and take on Cherokee at 2.30. For those are the teams that we cover these days, and I know that for the rest of the Tri-Cities it may seem a bit insular, but uh, hey, since the 50s, 1420 WEMB Sports Radio, or should I say WEMB, it's and we're kind of proud to say that. Why wouldn't it be? We're trying to be a good neighbor where the studio is. If you got a problem with that, you got a problem. So anyway, that's uh, the case right here. I haven't had much of a chance in this show to talk about the Masters. We've had so much other stuff. We've got the guests coming on. Of course, you know I want to give you the hockey playoffs and all. Again, Predators and Stars tomorrow at 6. Predators and Penguins, if, if your power is, come on. And... Uh, Regardless, here we go. Uh, Phil Mickelson, though, talked about the Masters. I want to get to this soundbite, and he says it's his favorite course there is. Well, hey, that's the talk of a champion. And it uh, brings out the best of me, usually. Uh, not always, but usually. And it, I can play it uh, very attacking the way I like to play it. And if I make a few mistakes or hit a few poor shots, I can usually salvage far bogey and move on. It's now on Monday, certainly. Hey, Bryson DeChambeau spoke to reporters after the first round of the Masters yesterday, and he ended the first day tied for the lead. He was six under par. And what did he credit for his successful opening round? Practice. If I get driven enough to where it's it's been a long enough time to where we haven't figured something out, I will exhaust every resource until I figure it out. And that's common with me. I become almost a little in a positive. DeChambeau for 14 hour practice sessions. Can you believe it? 14 hours. Wow. All right. That's right. By the way, who is leading right now in the match? Uh, actually, he is. Two through eight holes, and now is leading seven under par. He's got a two-stroke golfers, Francesco Molinari, who we told you uh, was somebody to look for in this, uh, you know, the, the the Italian, he was going to be one of the top Europeans, was Molinari. So he's only two strokes back. And then another American is only two strokes back of DiCembo, and that would be Patton Kizari. Kazari also uh, two strokes back. Now, the difference is they're both... Do I have that right? No, actually, Kazari is three strokes back. He fell back one. and uh, But it is actually... He is actually finished, though, as he shot the second round, two under partly running in fourth place. The person tied for it, the golfer tied with Molinari for second place, two strokes behind DiCembo, is, in fact, Jason Day. And Day and Chambo are on the same hole. Now, Day's had a better day today than has DeChambo. Today, he shot three under, both shot one under, but still for the overall uh, tournament in the Masters. DeChambo, two-stroke lead over everybody, uh, Molinari and Day. And uh, there you go. I know that, uh, yeah, some, I guess Tiger Woods was hot for a period of time. Uh, by the way, if you want to know, Phil Nicholson, uh, Mickelson, not Nicholson, Phil Mickelson is only uh, on the eighth hole, but uh, he's one over par today. So there you go. Brad Kopka, he's two over par today. He's on the seventh hole. He also is three shots back, so he's still in contention there. Tiger Woods, he hasn't teed off yet. He was two under par yesterday. Not bad. He's going to tee off towards the end of the show at 149. All right, see, so, and he's... Uh, that is uh, basically, I don't know what, Baba Watson, he's even... I'm still angry at him that he got... Uh, did I tell you the story about Bubba Watson and how uh, I got him a car? I'm sure, I guess now I can't deny that one here. Okay, I you know, I like the Dukes of Hazzard. Okay, I used to put on Dukes of Hazzard conventions. 
Uh, we did one in 20 years ago in Covington, Georgia. Rented out the building they use as the boar's nest, all this sort of stuff on the show. You know, we did all that. And uh, there's a gentleman named Travis Bell who stayed behind a few days. He started uh, going to local junkyards, and he found actually sitting in a junkyard uh, one of the cars, and it was believed the first car ever painted up and used on the TV show as the famous junkyard. And it was just a hulk, just a body, a shell, that sort of thing, sitting in a junkyard, old, you know, heard it, and eventually sold it to Bubba Watson. So I did not been for that Dukes of Hazzard convention that I helped put on, generally number one, known and restored and all this. The body has been, you know, restored to... Uh, And what, generally number one also is the first, uh, it was the only car, the only show, the checkered flag and the Confederate flag crossed over. Uh, they did that in the first show, and after that they didn't do it again. So, there you go. All right, is that Southern enough for you? How about the Atlanta Braves? Hey, Josh Brown is going to be talking about them with me in just a few. He does a podcast called Knock Elimination, and then Greg Gary, head coach of the Mercer. It's time to.